Welcome to the Veterinary Online Lectures. Um, today we have Dr. Ferguson here from the University of Illinois. Welcome. Um, what's the topic today? Today we're going to talk about thyroid binding proteins in the serum. Uh, and this is part of our physiology series so that we can uh, think about what happens to thyroid hormone after it leaves the thyroid hormone. So this, in the last unit we talked about the fact that T3 and T4 may violate our lens and we simply reviews what we talked about in that unit. Uh, but we want to focus here on these two hormones and what happens to them. Okay. Uh, you have a question? Yeah. Okay. As the listeners and watchers are veterinarians, when do they need it? Why, why do they need to know about this? Well, T3 and T4 are the two main thyroid hormones, and basically these are uh, important for our main diagnosis of the most common endocrine disorder in the dog, which is hypothyroidism, and the most common endocrine disorder in the cat, which is hyperthyroidism. Oh, okay. So two important endocrine problems. Okay. Uh, so the first thing that uh, I'm going to you back to your organic chemistry and sort of talk about, this is T4, and we know it's T4 because it's got four iodines. And yet it's a very lipophilic molecule, meaning that it's not happening in water. And so that, uh, that's why we need to have a strategy, the body has a strategy, to be able to carry this protein, this uh, small molecule around. Can we see that in this part too? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I mean, yeah uh, it's hard to see because the iodines are very large, but can see here the, the idea that um, we have a tyrosine. Tyrosine is um, you know, the phenyl ring, etc. It's very lipophilic. We have two of them in all of these very large ions that add to that uh, characteristic. So that leads us to uh, how this molecule needs to be carried around through the body. And it, it's can't handle by uh, thyroid binding proteins that are in the uh, circulation. And the main role that they play is, is to be a reservoir and a buffer. And it allows the, the hormone to not just be distributed to, into the first you know, organ that next to the thyroid gland, it allows it to be evenly distributed throughout the body. And this leads to um, these proteins actually in most cases for T3 and T4 are associated with 99% or more binding of the hormone uh, in that circumstance. And it does depend, as we'll talk about, between uh, species, it will be some difference, but there will be some differences. Okay. So, so the, we basically have three uh, binding proteins that vary between the species in terms of how much of each we have. But let's start with the sort of the common carrier protein for a lot of drugs as well as albumin. And this is the one that has the lowest affinity but the, uh, the highest quantity or capacity. And then we have pre-albumin, which I now the modern term is transthyrotin or GTR, which also happens to transport retinol gas. And it's kind of interesting that this uh, nutrient uh, vitamin, basically, vitamin A, is co-transported with thyroid hormone because it turns out that um, the nuclear transcription for thyroid hormone uh, is in the nucleus of the uh, cells is also shared in part by a heterodimeric system of then vitamin A and thyroid hormone. Um, Okay, so what that means, that's in a different unit when we talk about the action of thyroid hormone, but simply put that um, it requires for optimal signaling, it requires both vitamin A and its receptor and thyroid hormone and its receptor to be next to each other to get a full message from that uh, signaling system. Okay. So these are both nuclear receptor mediated uh, types of compound, small molecules. And then we have the protein that has the highest uh, affinity, and as you'll see, it's only in the upper mammals that we see a lot of this protein. That's thyroxine-binding body. So it's got the lowest quantity with the highest affinity. 
And this is a little bit of, uh, to show you from fish to man, uh, where, what proteins we have in uh, these particular transthyrotin and thyroxin binding globulin. And so the first thing you can see is that below uh, actually canines, and it doesn't even include, um, this is relatively speaking, we'll see in the next slide that actually the cats come out a little bit of TBG, but from dogs up to man, particularly in primates, uh, and in ruminants, it turns out, they have a lot of TBG. Whereas all the other fish, there's, there's this protein that's carrying thyroid hormone. So it's common amongst all species. Okay. And then albumin and fibromyalgia is the same for all species? Yeah, albumin is not specific to thyroid hormones. I didn't listen to here, so it's not been involved because of thyroid hormone, but these two proteins did. And they're actually somewhat regulated by thyroid hormone as well. And the pigs are somewhere in between the between the Yeah, I thought you might ask that question. So let's take this look at the next one. This is some data, but the basic way to characterize this is these are um, the amount of radioactive T4 that would be bound to any given protein in any circumstance. And the main thing is you asked about the pig. The pig is probably similar to the dog. And so it's kind of like a dog in that there's 10% or so that's bound to transthyrotin, about 30% of TBG, and about 30% of 20% of it. You can see significant amount in the case of about 40% to albumin. Mm -hmm. So that's why we start to see as T transthyrotin and TBG go down in quantity, the role of albumin which is, can be competed for by drugs and other things that become more important. Um, and, and you mentioned the pig and go, they're pretty much like cattle. You see the numbers are pretty similar, about 50% TBG, just like people, humans, and other primates. So in this slide, what I want to do is just focus on the top uh, where we're going to talk about the in vivo situation uh, and why are these, how do these protein binding, uh, protein, the binding proteins with thyroid and how they work, why do they work. And I'm just going to represent it here as a plasma binding protein, PBV. The first thing to know is that we're in, it's an equilibrium between the protein and free T4, which is the unbound fraction of T4. It actually isn't because it's not, it doesn't cost anything. That's, that's mm -hmm. sort of something people think it's a cheaper test. It's not a cheaper test. So it's in equilibrium. If we try to, this is the plasma, and here's the cell. And so it's only this part, the small fraction, and any species about one part of a thousand will get across the membrane. And, and then why is it important? Because it's this fraction that drives the action of the hormone in that cell and also the metabolism, including the uh, further degradation of T3, which is actually an activated step in the cell. Um, and this is an ongoing process, so this changes all the time. Which yeah, that's a hard that's a concept a lot of people have a hard time. When we say this is this is a passing through an organ. It's constantly going on, it's constantly coming off, but it's sort of keeping the, at any given moment, the amount that's free, the same small fraction, about 0.1%. Um, and it's, yes, so that's where I say it's also a reservoir, because as it comes off and delivers to the cell, it also only opens up, allows more to come off, uh, dissociate, and become free. So the next organ, so that's why I think that it kind of works. And it's necessary that it be a non renal basically. So it also means that the amount of free T4 depends on the secretion and depends on the amount of protein binding? Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, so you have the, the amount of hormone that's made by the gland, and then you have this uh, combination of these proteins. And they're also regulated to some extent by the thyroid status, for instance, the hypothyroid individual have more um, binding protein because an attempt to try to make up for um, uh, you know, the carrying that protein around. So, and so taking away the pituitary will also have an impact. So growth hormones will also impact on those proteins. So there's, they, they are 
regulated by the Indian system to some extent as well. So what we try to do here in uh, on the bottom, I want to now show the vitro situation, which is to say, how do we measure this? Look at the difference in the total T4, 
also about threefold. So the product of these, however, is very similar. And so that means that T4, total T4 concentrations are highly dominated by the which T becomes to reduce both. The other thing to know is that half-life of the hormone in the circulation is about seven days in people. It's about half a day in the cat or a dog. And so that suggests that the presence of TPG is one of the one of the reasons, not all the only reason, why you have um, longer half-lives in those species. And that's important for diagnosing, not, not for diagnosing so much as for treatment, because we treat, we can treat less frequently in those species that you know. When we have so big differences between the free and the total of T4, does it also mean if we have cases of hyper or hypotrogenism that there are bigger or lesser changes? Yes, yes. One, one thing that I haven't spent a lot of time talking about, but you can have illness that will alter the relationship between T4 and its binding proteins. Drugs will do that. And so as you get uh, more complex situations, not a pure thyroid disease, you get pure thyroid and some illness or animal treated with drugs, you start to see um, total T4 mean less in terms of the actual diagnostic. Free T4 means more. And we also have situations in, in the dog where thyroid or antibodies are created that actually makes the total T4 acid worthless, whereas the free T4 method by dialysis is the accurate answer. So it's interesting. So just to summarize here, uh, it's a lipophilic uh, low uh, molecule with low water solid. So the strategy is to, to have these binding proteins. I mean, we didn't talk about them, but there's some in the cell as well to kind of facilitate the transfer within the cell of thyroid hormone. The binding proteins that are most dominant are from the, um, we'll now take the root of talking about the most tight binding is the TBG and then transthyrotin and then albumin. And you see various mixes. Fraction and yet the free fraction is determined, determined uh, by this mixture of these binding proteins, depending on the species. And this is your take home message. Remember, as a clinician, you care about free T4, not because of its cost, because it's a little more expensive, but because of the value you get. It's the single, I'll give you a punchline for a future unit. It's the single test that um, gives you the most diagnostic.